Hello. Um, some of you might have uh, heard about this one uh, already uh, because it's in the news. Um, but um, I was uh, when I was asked to give a speech, uh, well, or I considered giving a speech, speech again at uh, Disobey. I came up with something else, actually. But uh, things coincided and ended up being a talk about this thing, ac actually, more like an actual process. Anyway, Intel AMT, everyone, everyone knows pretty much what it is, but let's go through the paces first. So personally, uh, well, a couple of things. I've been doing this for a long time, but professionally, only 10 years plus. Um, I also um, I work at uh, F-Secure, uh, security consulting, cybersecurity consulting, and uh, well, um, I've been applying my skills there as well. Um, I've done this stuff for a long, long time, uh, well over 30 years. Uh, quickly. Uh, Super short introduction to Intel IMT, what it is, what it does, and then to the story. And this is not nothing against Intel per se. It just happens to be that this is an Intel thing, and it is nothing to do with the other Intel things that are going on at this point. Uh, purely coincidental. Intel IMT is a system that enables um, someone could be organization, IT, or some, someone else to do out-of-band management of your computer. Um, maintain, monitor, update, upgrade. You can even wipe or reinstall the operating system using this thing. And usually, um, well, it's remote. Uh, so usually laptops. Corporate laptops are the most common case these days where you actually have AMT. It's also called vPro, or Management Engine, or ME. Um, there are a couple of names for it. It's also available in servers, but since servers, if you gain access to a server physically, you are lost already. But anyway, a couple of keywords. Remote and out-of-band management. OK. Lots of vulnerabilities already existing in this thing. Um, well, I can count six. I'm, I'm fairly certain that there will be much, much more coming. Um, the biggest problem, obviously, is that um, if you want to upgrade Intel AMT, you actually have to upgrade your firmware. And uh, unfortunately, there's a huge delay between, um, well, if Intel says that we fixed this thing, the actual moment that you can fix your own computer is actually could be months, could be years. You actually get upgrade to your system. And in some cases, you never get a firmware upgrade to your laptop. It could be that, OK, end of, pro end of life product, you never get a fix for this issue or some of these issues that are listed here, for instance. It is, as far as I see, uh, no, uh, even the first one, uh, 0075, even that one is in, not fixed in most of the uh, laptops. And that's pretty serious in itself already. Now, that was quick introduction to Intel AMT. Uh, there's a lot more to say about it, obviously. But let's get into the actual beef. Now, I was playing, uh, playing with a computer, trying to just hack it, basically. I was trying to gain access to a laptop uh, it was fairly well hardened also, so everything was set up properly, pit locker with pin, uh, antivirus, firewall, VPN, BIOS password, and everything was there. So it was fairly difficult to try to um, gain access. So I tried a couple of things that I normally try, DMA uh, uh, attacks, just trying to gain access to the memory. Nope, doesn't work. Uh, it was the latest Windows 10, so that didn't work. I tried uh, booting malicious uh, device. So I tried to boot from a USB. Uh, but damn, there's a BIOS password, so I can't do anything. So I cannot boot from an external device. But then I saw this. 
And uh, if you're careful, you see here that it says that password is required. So if you have a star there, it means that you need to give a password. And then, uh, well, what's this? Intel Management Engine BIOS extension. It doesn't require a password. Hmm, this is interesting. So, OK. Surely not. I, 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 well, if I, if I just try to boot from that, does it work? Oh, I get this. Well, oh, this is interesting. But uh, yes, there's a logging, so you have to have a password to actually access it. So, da, yeah, it doesn't really work. Except the password, by default, is admin. So, wait. The system was hardened. There was a BIOS password. And it, I shouldn't be able to access the system at all. Uh, so I can go to this menu, and I can use this admin password to log on. And then the plan is hatched up. So say, if I power cycle the victim's computer, or just start it if it's powered off, I can forcibly just power it off and then start it again. Um, I enter this BIOS extension. I log on with the default password, which is admin. And then I change it. I have to give a new password. Then I enable remote access, which is not enabled by default. So you normally only can access it locally. But if you enable remote access, you can then access the system later on remotely. So let's see what happens. First. Well, first, we try to preach the system. Admin, then a new password. OK. Now it's uh, enabled. But we also need network access, so we can actually remotely control the system. OK, that's done. Now we have remote access. Now, normally, the system will uh, pop up uh, a consent request. So do you allow someone to access your computer remotely? But yeah, let's disable that one as well. So no questions asked. This just works. Now, normally, it's only wired connection. But if you log on with the wired connection, you can enable it for wireless access as well. So now you can come over from wireless networks as well, so you don't need to have an Ethernet connection at all. Brilliant. So what it actually means, um, hmm, where's my pointer? There we go. And now I actually attack the system. Now, this can happen uh, if you are in the same network segment. So this is the situation where I'm doing that exactly. So basically, VNC, connection to the remote system. This thing is fully hardened. It has everything, uh, everything the corporation would possibly want to install. Every, everything is secured and I can remotely access the system over wireless network. So yeah. <laughs> Some random thoughts um, to add. Um, yes, you need to have physical access to the system initially. So basically, you can't do this remotely. It just isn't possible. So, but you only need to do this once. So yes, at a hotel room, or if you go drink a couple of beers with friends, and then you leave your laptop unattended for a couple of minutes, someone could do this. Now, normally, you need to be in the same network segment. So you need to be the same wireless network, for instance, to be able to remotely access the system. Unfortunately, it is also possible to configure the system so that it will connect 
to a attacker's uh, server and call back home. So now it works actually everywhere. So basically, you can access the system regardless where you are. As long as there's a network connectivity and the computer can connect out to the internet, you're screwed. So the laptop is like permanently backdoored and uh, can be accessed at any time. <laughs> OK, so you may say that, uh, well, is this really that bad? But now if we consider the things that this bypasses, so uh, system password, set in BIOS, BitLocker, even if you have a PIN code, uh, local domain, user accounts, things, obviously. Uh, client firewall, no, it doesn't actually prevent anything, because this thing is working below the operating system. So any firewall that you have locally on your computer, no, it doesn't prevent anything. It can't block this thing. Uh, antivirus, anti-malware, no, it can't see anything at all. So mm, yes, it is fairly bad. And VPN. Oh, you might think, OK, VPN will save me. But unfortunately, it only gives the attacker more access. It'll, it'll allow the attacker to access to your company resources. So it's even worse. And now, now if you think, that, OK, I'm in a cafe, I'm using VPN, and then the attacker is also sitting at the cafe, and then when you, once you have VPN connecting, connection, you also give access to all these company resources. So oops, that doesn't help either. Now, um, realization came to me at some point. Um, I could, like, I could, I had access to a number of different uh, computers, and I looked into them, and every one of them had the same problem. And another thing, it's usually some, these laptops are used by corporations, which is like bad, and you can think of some other places that might use them. I'm not going to speculate what they might be. But you can, you can guess. Um, usually, it's high value. So say CEO or something like that. If you can gain access to their laptop, it's fairly bad. Obviously, you get access to the, all the resources the user themselves have. So oh, you, can, you don't want to think about it, actually. Um, I tried to look into this thing. So has this thing been discovered before? I found a couple of uh, references to certain things that have been found before, but all of them kind of like mentioned the thing, and then they were like, OK, but this really isn't a problem. So no one seemed to really understand the like, gravity of the issue. Um, and they weren't making sufficient noise either. So no one actually made a big fuss about it for some reason. So this thing is old. Some people have seen this before. And I'm not claiming that I just discovered this thing, because I know that other people have also discovered it. But they didn't like maybe realize, or maybe they did, but didn't do anything. But maybe they didn't realize that all the like ramifications that this thing actually has. Now, the interesting part is that, well, I, I initially found this on July 2017. Uh, I immediately realized that, OK, this is like a nightmare to coordinate. I mean, it's lots of lots, lots of vendors, multi-vendor thing. Uh, many of them are in the States. Many of them are in Asia and so forth. So if anyone of you actually have tried to do vulnerability coordination uh, with Japanese or Chinese, guys, it's, it's a challenge. Anyway, I contacted CERT uh, CC directly because I thought, OK, this is a high profile thing. I need help. And eventually, I also had to kind of contact all of the vendors that I could think of, which I, the list I got from was an older AMT vulnerability, and just looked at the vendors, and OK, I need to contact these 12 guys. And I did. But obviously, Intel was the prime uh, target for contacting, because that's the Intel AMT is made by Intel, and Intel is giving uh, instructions to vendors how to implement it. How, how do you incorporate it with your BIOS and so forth? Now, while this was happening, things just progressed on the background until someone actually pointed out, uh, it, was, it was already in November, but someone pointed out that uh, Pat Shukla, I'm sorry if I pronounce his name wrong, probably I do, but he gave an uh, excellent talk about Intel AMT 
uh, at a conference. Uh, it's called Intel AMT using and abu abusing the ghost in the machine. And he just dropped the vulnerability casually in the side sideline. OK, so I tried to do this, and it didn't ask for a BIOS password. So maybe it's a problem, maybe it's a feature. And that's it. No auto mention, but it was like, oh, shit. Uh, my vulnerability was just like burned by someone. Uh, so, oh, yeah. It's kind of like a bad thing, because now all the attackers know it. So all these guys who are actually e exploiting these things, they know about it. But no one actually seems to be like uh, um, knowing or making, making like all the right uh, decisions on, on company level or personally to mitigate the problem. So well, we figured that, hell, what the hell? We just need to go public with this. It doesn't really help that. Um, we would just sit around waiting for this to be exploited more and more. So we decided to go public soon, but knowing how long things actually usually take, uh, that was the decision was made on November, and here we are. Um, on December, I got an interesting email from Intel that they actually said that they have revised um, the guidance that they give to OEMs, which are the vendors. So um, already in uh, November, they are now saying that the BIOS password is required for AMT provisioning if it is, has been set. So basically fixing the problem. Now it doesn't really, well, if you ha don't have a BIOS password, then you are screwed, obviously. But well, then you are not hardened anyway. So that's uh, to proper fix. Obviously, um, it will take time to actually get this fixed in the actual hardware or in a firmware that you can flash and so forth. And now the public uh, disclosure. Uh, we just have to do it because now, now it's in the, it's, it was already public information. It was already known. And now it's also known by the good people who can actually do something about it. Um, this is interesting as well. So this is a public document um, that uh, answers various questions, uh, gives answers to various questions about Intel AMT that people have had. And I think this document has been modified recently, because I don't remember seeing the uh, bold, uh, the bold is mine. Uh, I haven't seen this last statement saying that if the system manufacturer has followed Intel's recommendation to protect the Intel MEPX menu with the system BIOS password, these physical attacks would be mitigated. Yes, um, I think that has been modified recently and added, uh, uh, but that makes sense. Um, Yes, maybe they also updated the document like a week ago, a week before this, but who knows? <laughs> so yeah, uh, it is true. Nothing wrong with it, but it's, I think it wasn't there before. Now, what can you do? Well, this is always an option. Um, unfortunately, not everyone is going to be able to uh, keep their computers uh, in a safe all the time. Uh, I can't. So. Um, First things first, consumer devices don't have Intel AMT or vPro or MA, whatever it's called. Uh, so you're probably safe already. Uh, some vendors also say that they are not affected. Um, Asus said pretty early on that they actually don't have this problem. They are already requiring the BIOS password. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to test this because Asus, Asus uh, corporate laptops, laptops are kind of hard to find. Also, you don't get to play with these computers if you go to a store, because they are, like, uh, they are, they are not the consumer models. And some vendors actually have changed uh, their tactics. Now they say, when, when, you, when you actually go buy a Dell computer, um, a corporate Dell computer, the default is to have Intel AMT completely disabled. And you specifically have to go and select, OK, I want this backdoor in my computer. And then you get it. Um, that's a good thing. Uh, but I'm not endorsing Dell in any way, because as you heard in an earlier talk, there are some problems with Dells. Mm, but this thing is a good one. Um, yeah, so what should you do? Well, obviously, you should install all firmware updates that you can get hold of. Um, and then try to see if you can do this, if you can do the thing, which uh, certain key combination or so forth. 
um, and then try to log on. But if you need, are required to enter the BIOS password, well, then it's all good. Then your device is already doing the right thing that Intel is now telling uh, vendors to do. But if you can log on without the BIOS password, and you can log on with admin, um, it's either of the two things. Um, if it's not admin, either your organization has already taken care of this, or you have been totally pwned already. So someone is actually probably using your computer remotely already. So um, it's a bit difficult if this happens. Uh, but if you know for sure that your, your organization did it, OK, then you're fine. Otherwise, hmm, could be interesting. Um, couple of things. End users, well, install all the firmware updates, at least SA0075. Uh, completely disable uh, AMT if it's possible. Uh, some devices actually seem to allow it, uh, but it's a bit unclear if it really works. Uh, but if nothing else works, provision Intel AMT yourself. So just change the password. But don't enable network access. Don't. Just change the password. That's enough. And strong password that no one can guess. Uh, organizations, well, well, obviously, you need to think how you will you do it. I would think that most are actually have some processes in place that make sensible choices. Say, secure high targets. High-risk uh, high targets first, say CEO and all the high-ups. Um, and then it could be a bit difficult to get um, this thing deployed remotely, but it can be done. Um, the, this resource gives some ideas at least how to do it. Um, there could be some better documentations also, but I just couldn't find them. It's, sometimes it's really difficult to find proper, like, guides or instructions how to, how to do certain things. And this is one of those things. There isn't really just one document who would say that do this, and then everything will be fixed. Um, there's a couple of things that you possibly might want to look, uh, take a look at. Uh, the adversary. Um, this is all the technical stuff. And this is, has all the timelines and so forth, uh, which could, would be interesting also, or could be, I don't know. Some people like uh, technical details. They, they are there. Um, then this tiny URL is legit. It's not like linked to some malware or something. Uh, the link was just huge, huge like uh, Intel thing. So it's, it was like breaking the layout. So security best practices of Intel Active Management Technology questions and answers. And this is, by the way, where I got this one answer. Uh, that's a good document. Um, gives you at least some good advice, and it's coming from Intel, so they know what they're saying. It, it's pretty good. Um, a third one, that's like, um, well, f -secures, like uh, take on the issue also. Um, so we have something to say, and probably will also update these things as uh, more information is coming out also. Um, and this, the last one, is the really excellent talk about Intel AMT, because I only could scratch the surface, basically, about what you can do with the Intel AMT. You can do remote access to the system, but you can do lots and lots of things. If you want to know more about that one, look at that presentation. It's excellent. And also, he also drops the volume there, uh, if you spot it. It was just a mention. Uh, but that is an excellent resource for uh, learning about Intel AMT. Now, um, do you, does anyone have uh, questions? Because that's basically it. <laughs> questions? Anyone are there? Uh, do we have a microphone? There's someone over there. Hello. Thanks for. Thanks for a great talk, as usual. So the question is, can you see anything from software side? Has the AMT been set or been tampered with? So can you read the AMT settings from, uh, let's say, Windows or Linux? Uh, that's a really good question. And uh, I think you can see something, actually. Because uh, there are drivers. Uh, some drivers are related to this thing. So I think it actually can show up as some, some way if you actually are using this AMT thing. Um, but 
I don't, I'm not exactly sure if, it, if it's like a bulletproof way of like detecting if someone is doing foul play. I don't know. Or, and then follow up question, can you modify MT settings from there? So let's say that I get an admin access to a computer using a remote exploit. Could I actually use this to set up a back foot, back door for myself? Just sorry, asking. Sorry, I, I just couldn't quite hear. So, uh, so, so the point is that if I have a piece of code running with admin access, mm -hmm. so I can access the Intel drivers, mm -hmm. could I use that to configure the AMT settings and then get myself the nice, lovely backdoor access without ever having physically to touch the machine? That is an excellent question, actually. I, I don't know. Maybe you can find out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, if that is possible, that's really nasty, actually. Uh, but I think you can think of, I, I know you so well that I, I know that you are probably thinking some weird scenarios already. I'm professionally evil, you know that. <laughs> uh, anyone else? More questions? Anyone? Because I guess I'm uh, running out of time. So make noise or wave or something if someone has any questions. But it seems that I guess we are done. Thank you.